A warm greetings to all viewers all over the world. Thank you so much for joining us at Gospel Hour. I'm your host, Anu Temda Jacob. Tonight, I'm so excited to have one of our special guests, the man of God, the one that I respect so much, Prophet Lincoln, the Black Elijah. Thank you so much, man of God, for joining us tonight. Glory, glory, glory. I'm so excited, man of God, Amen. to be hosted with you on this Gospel Hour. I believe we are really in the hour where the Lord is about to do something new to this generation. So I don't take your invitation for granted. And I believe that tonight the Lord will touch and visit this generation. Thank you so much, man of God. Uh, tonight we are going to discuss a sensitive topic in the body of Christ. But I'm sure that uh, Christians as well, they want to know much about this, uh, especially in this time that we are right now. Uh, but before we go there, I just want us to read in the book of Luke 9, verse 1 to 2. One day Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons, to heal all diseases. Then he sent them out to tell every, everybody about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So tonight we are going to discuss about the topic that I have titled, uh, Does Miracles Still Exist? But I'm sure that uh, you are going to break it nicely as I respect you so much, that God speaks to you. Man of God, does miracle still exist? Yeah, you have asked a very sensitive and a very crucial question, especially in this generation we're living in. Understanding that we are living in the last of the last days where a lot of things are happening. But I want you to understand that despite of a lot of things that are taking place in the body of Christ, God is still alive. God is still doing great miracles. And me and you being sitting today, it is the power of miracle. Because yes. every day as you sleep and waking up, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. Because in our sleep, we travel to the land of the dead. And okay. we wake up again, that's another miracle. And I always tell people that the greatest miracle, it is salvation. Yes. You just being born from a wrong family. And today you are called a son of God. Mm -hmm. that's, a miracle. that's a miracle. Enough. But it's only that what, I could, what does our world define as miracle? As miracle. That, that has to be the question. What do people define as miracle? Because I want you to understand something. This generation needs to understand the lexicons of the move of God. When we speak about the lexicons of the move of God, we're talking about the languages mm -hmm. of the move of God. Mm -hmm. We're living in a generation that is actually highly favored. If there is any time in history that I would wish to be, uh, to be alive, this is the time we, we, in which we are living. Jesus spoke to his disciples and he made them understand something. And he told them that the time and the days you are living in, your fathers, many prophets in the old, the old prophets, they all dreamt of this day. They all dreamt that one day they would walk in this season where they will be walking with Christ, the revealed the Messiah. But check the generation that Jesus was talking about. This is the generation of Peter that just is saying that the people from the Old Testament, they longed to walk with him. But look, the generation of Peter, they were walking with him, but now we are walking in him, in him. and he is in us. in us. Colossians 1 verse 31, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. So when we speak about ministry, you know, when you speak about miracles, I'm not divide, diverting from your question. Mm -hmm. I just wanted the world to understand with you. When we speak about miracle in the beginning, what is it that we call miracle? You know what we call a miracle? Mm -hmm. It is like in our world, we believe in that it's God doing something. Yes. That thing is already, ha it has already happened, but it has happened in the spirit. Mm -hmm. it, or Like you come here today, you don't talk. The next thing when you leave, you're already talking. Already in eternal world, you're already speaking. Mm -hmm. So when we speak a miracle has taken place, it's only a power of enlightenment. With people, are you in line to be where God wanted you to be? and doing what God wanted you to be, when that power of alignment, you encounter what we call a miracle. Mm -hmm. So our generation, we do not have men of encounters. Mm. We do not have men that are working with God. Powerful. That's why things are being fagged. Mm -hmm. That's why people are staging things. That's why people are trying to help God in doing certain things. It can mm -hmm. be miracle, the prophetic. Mm -hmm. But I believe God is still talking. And miracles are real. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you. Are miracles uh, meant for everyone or they are just meant for certain people? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. So miracles are meant for everyone or are meant for certain people. Mm. Um, it all depends 
on, as I said, on what we are calling miracle. Mm -hmm. Because every day we need a miracle to sail through that day. Mm -hmm. Because you're understanding that, like, uh, the Bible says concerning these days, uh, in the book of First Timoth, Second Timothy chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse 5, it says, They will hear of the form of godliness, but denying mm -hmm. the power thereof which is the church that we have today, mm -hmm. that it is a symbolic of a religion, but the power of God is being denied. Mm -hmm. So I believe in miracle. Mm -hmm. I walk in miracle. I do miracle. Yes. We eat miracle. We live miracle. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing a miracle. Mm -hmm. I am a miracle. Mm -hmm. So I believe that everyone to sell through the success of the day and to sell through the day, you need a miracle because you understand the happenings that happens in the spirit, mm -hmm. man of God. Mm -hmm. Before you get into a day, there are devoted witches, there are devoted satanists, there are devoted devil worshippers yes. that does incantation the whole time you are sleeping, mm -hmm. already predicting failure, doom, and all kind of bad things to happen to you as you walk through the day. Mm -hmm. So I believe that we might not know or we might not see what God has done, but I believe everyone needs a miracle, a miracle. and everyone survives through a miracle. A miracle. Mm -hmm. So I believe a miracle is a reward for everyone. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so powerful. Thank you. Does God just release miracle or you have to pray for it? No, no. That's, that's really a profound question. That's really a profound question. Uh, I believe what we call a miracle is a supernatural intervention. Mm -hmm. And supernatural intervention does not happen because something in the natural has caused it. Mm -hmm. But it's in two ways. It's in two ways because I've once heard a great man saying that divine or divinity cannot do anything to humanity mm -hmm. unless somebody prays. Yes. So prayer, fasting and all other commitments in the things of God enlightened us into the place where God wants to encounter with us. Mm -hmm. God is, you, you, let me take you back in a bit. The world we are calling miracle, the way we are talking about miracle and everything, it's a world that when a man was created, God wanted us to operate from that platform mm -hmm. of the supernatural. He wanted us to operate from that platform where things happen. He wanted us to operate from that platform of in, where impossibilities are possible. But what happened now, uh, due to the fall of the first man called Adam, mm -hmm. the man drifted from the place where God wanted him to be. Mm -hmm. So that's why you realize now, that a man who, who, who has drifted from the place where God wants, wants him to be, he cannot understand the language of God, the mm -hmm. lexicons of God. God comes to Adam and says, Adam, where are you? Yes. Adam says, I'm naked. He's talking about his condition. God is asking, is asking for, about his location. location. So what I'm trying to say is this. Miracles, they are always, uh, as I said, it's already something that has already happened in the unseen world. Mm -hmm. But now for it to manifest in the unseen world, it needs, it, 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 it needs, it needs the participation of someone from the, from the visible world, the one we are seeing. Yes. That's what the Bible speaks about the sons of Isaac. They knew what to do mm -hmm. in the right seasons. They knew what to do. Then the Bible says uh, all these tribes of Israel, they become subject yes. to the sons of Isaac. Which means being in the right place, being the right person, doing the right thing mm. will guarantee one a miracle, will guarantee one greatness. When Jacob blessed uh, the, his, the tribes of Israel before he died in Genesis 49, there was never a prophet that one day a king would come from the tribe of Isaac. Mm -hmm. But in the book of Chronicles, we're hearing that the sons of Isaac, they actually become kings, they become rulers over each, over 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 all the tribes of Israel. Why? Because they understood times. They understood mm -hmm. what they are supposed to do. So I believe that if our generation can understand what God is trying to communicate, mm -hmm. if we can have men that can communicate God to a generation, mm -hmm. miracles, miracles becomes our daily bread. Miracles becomes our daily lifestyle. If prayer, is your, if, if, if prayer becomes a habit, miracles becomes your lifestyle. Yes. Mm. Oh, thank you. Mm. But is there anything that called a uh, fake miracle? Uh, for you to be fake, then it's disqualified already from being a miracle. Mm. I believe what you're trying to say, fake miracle, is there anything like drama or, or gimmicks? Okay. These are gimmicks. We have charlatans in the church. Mm -hmm. So, 
gimmicks are happening they're everywhere but uh what may be the reason and the cause for them to fake things or stage things why because uh as we we read from the book of Luke, mm -hmm. that jesus christ uh, commanded his disciples to go and heal to go and preach so what might the cause of this uh other men of gods who are faking things uh i can't answer for them because i I will never fake with them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But uh, let me try to speak according to my own understanding. Mm. You see what's happening in the last days. Men are pressurized due to fame, money, and power. And so men are driven by their own selfish ambitions. Mm. Men are driven, are driven by ungodly desires. And due to that, men are under pressure to want to be known. People mm. are under pressure. You know, um, I was inspired by a man called William Branham who died in 1966. Mm -hmm. These are God's generals. And you realize during the gener generation of William Branham, if you would want to prophesy or if you would want God to speak to you, mm -hmm. you would not go and seek for the Father to impart your gift. Yes. But one would seek God. Mm -hmm. One would pray, spend days in prayer, days in mountain. Mm -hmm. But our generation now, because of grace and uh, the advancement that has happened and the grace that is too much for the generation and everything, people now, they have substituted the place of God with fathers. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Wait, wait, if you do not operate in deliverance and you know that this man of God operates in deliverance, mm -hmm. more now, instead of seeking God, you seek that man mm -hmm. of God, not the mm -hmm. God of men. Powerful. So, so these are things that are pressurizing our generation that everyone wants to be like this. Yet we are all created with our own uniqueness. Mm -hmm. I can't be you. You can't be me. That's, That's the reason why our fingerprints, even if you are to leave millionaires to come, there will never be anyone with female fingerprints like yours. Mm -hmm. Why? That's what makes you unique. Yes. So we differentiated in that with that uniqueness. But our generation was pressurizing people into doing this and everything. Mm -hmm. It's because people are seeing people doing certain things that they are not doing. So because this man of God can raise people from the wheelchair and probably Lincoln is just a pure prophet. Mm -hmm. And now Lincoln trying to edify or edit what he does and he tries to, because of that pressure, people ending up engaging themselves in wrongdoings, mm -hmm. in wrong things. They try to yell the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They try to yell the Holy Spirit. The Bible says they shall come wearing like sheep, but mm -hmm. inside they are wolves. The wolves. So we have wolves in the, in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. that's, why you, that's why you realize that God has called us to shepherd the flock, his sheep, not to eat the, the sheep. So we have reached a level to do anything to trend. So we have reached that level that uh, we have celebrities, mm. not men of God. Mm. I'd rather be a man of integrity that God loves than being a celebrity that God has. Oh, that's powerful. Mm. So nowadays we don't have men of God. We have men of God. Mm. God. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. We have mm. men of God. Thank you, men of God. You are blessing our viewers. <laughs> uh, why does God do miracles? Why does God do miracles? Uh, you'd understand that if you read the Bible in few occasions that God has did miracles, I will refer to the children of Israel uh, in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. There was a need for manna. Mm -hmm. You got the point? Mm -hmm. And this will also answer the question why people fix miracles. Mm -hmm. You understand that God provided manna for the children of Israel because there was a need. Yes. They were walking in the wilderness where there was no bakery, there was no butchery, they could not buy certain food items. Mm -hmm. So then God provided manna, which means what is this? Which means the one who had appetite for pizza that day, you would enjoy pizza in that manner. The one who had appetite for meat that day, would enjoy meat in that manner. Mm -hmm. So God provided a miracle. God did a miracle because there was a necessity. Mm -hmm. There was a need. But our men of God now are pressurized by the, uh, by the limelight. People want to entertain the crowd. Yes. People want to make the crowd uh, happy and Due to that, now they're trying to uh, perform or do certain things outside of the presence of God. That's why people are faking mm. miracles. That's the reason why. You understand something? I want you to tell you something that is very deep. If you read the Bible very well, the Bible speaks about Samson. They say that when Delilah, uh, when Delilah removed Samson's hair mm -hmm. and called the Philistines, the first thing the Philistines did when they arrived, they made sure they took out Samson's eyesight. Mm -hmm. After they took out Samson's eyesight, the Bible says Samson was now used for entertainment in their arena, and he was entertaining a greater crowd than mm -hmm. the one he used to entertain mm -hmm. when he, God was still with him. 
So look now, Samson was a man of God that after sleeping in the wrong, in the wrong arms, he woke up without the grace. Mm -hmm. After waking up without the grace, now he's being used for entertainment and he's actually entertaining a lot of crowds. Then the Bible says also he was now being led by a young, young man. Mm -hmm. So which is the state that the church is now. That the church now, because the enemy has taken away grace from people who are supposed to be men of God. Mm -hmm. So because they're operating outside of grace, but now because they, are, they have more crowds than than they used to be, mm -hmm. they used to have back in the days. Mm -hmm. So now they're using the gift for entertainment. entertainment. That's why you realize prophecy is being used to expose. I tell you that your mother is a witch. Mm -hmm. I don't think God is that cruel. Mm -hmm. You get the point? I tell you that you are not working because your brother did this and this and this. I tell you, Pamela, why? Mm. God, I don't think God is, is that cruel. That's, mm. that's my, my ways of understanding. So prophecy is being delivered in an immature way, yes. which is the state Samson was, that mm. he was, his gift was used for entertainment. entertainment. Besides entertainment, he was being led by young men. He was an immature. We have immature grown-ups in church. Mm. People we're supposed to look up to as fathers. We don't have father in our generation. Mm. Mm. We, we have boys. We have boys. We have boys in the church. So that's why gifts are being used for entertainment, being pressurized and everything. That's why they're in competition. Mm. Thank you. Mm. But before we go any further, mm -hmm. uh, I know that also we've got our fellow brothers in the mm -hmm. body of Christ who are watching right now. Mm -hmm. What is your advice that you can give them also? Mm -hmm. uh, one advice that I'd like to give to the fellow men of God and brothers in ministry is one. One I'll start with the young, young preachers. Mm -hmm. Is that like, uh, if Jesus is your role model, then you are a real model. Mm -hmm. I pray that people look up to Jesus Amen. because many people are defiled and contaminated because they look up to the man of God, not to the God of man. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's what made our young, young, most young preachers to mm -hmm. be under pressures of trying to be someone and, and trying to do something like, I, I have one message that God once gave me. God told me that I'm not looking for another T.D. Jacks. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for another Noah Jones. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for another Joe Austin. Yes. I'm not looking for another Renard Bonk. I'm mm -hmm. not looking for another William Branham. Mm -hmm. But he's looking for another you, 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 yourself. Yes. So God will actually appreciate us in our original state. Mm -hmm. Let's Perfect. be ourselves. Let's walk in the perfect ordinations and mm -hmm. perf perfect wills of God. So our generation is pressurized and they are trying to be everything that everyone expects them to be. But... They are not being themselves. Yes. You know, we, we live in, in times when people don't know themselves and while they don't know themselves, they are telling to people who doesn't even know who they are to tell them, who are you? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have a board of directors, mm. but without direction, oh confused yet confident. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much. I like the way you break it. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Uh, can God take back a miracle from a person? You can go take back a miracle from a person. Uh, I want you to understand something that Jesus once spoke about. He says, um, Jesus says, if an unclean spirit is taken out of a man, it goes to the dry places looking for a place. When they do not find a way to rest, they will come back to the same person. Mm -hmm. And if they find this person empty, the situation will actually be more worse mm -hmm. and more critical and crucial than it was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that uh, I believe that in, when God does something for you, he has done it wholeheartedly, but it's also our duty to secure the miracle. We mm -hmm. secure ourselves in the presence of God. Jesus healed 10 lepers. One leper only came. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told, and Jesus actually appreciated his gratitude. Yes. And uh, I don't know the ones that he did not appreciate their gratitude, mm -hmm. their, like their ways of doing things. What happened to them? Probably, mm -hmm. they died even in more lep lepros than it was in the beginning. Yes. So a miracle can only be secured by being in the presence of God, because let's say the miracle that happened to you was that demons didn't want you to talk. Probably mm -hmm. because you're supposed to be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Then when God now gives you an utterance, God has given a tongue to talk, that's the miracle that has happened to you. Mm -hmm. Then you go with the same mouth that God has yielded from not talking. You go and you become probably a drunkard, drinking alcohol with that and everything. You are more likely to 
be affected and be in the same state again. Thank you. That's what I believe. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Can miracles happen every day or they are for a certain days or time and season? Uh, I believe when it comes to seasons and times that God does things, the uh, it's God only who decides on such times. Mm -hmm. Or it's only when we avail ourselves to what he wants to do for that season, for that time. You can be like Jeremiah. God tells you that I'm looking for a man to send. Then Jeremiah runs around the whole city looking for a man that God can, mm -hmm. can send. Yet he's a man who's doing nothing. Until Jeremiah availed himself, like Samuel, who says, and here I am, Lord, use me. Then mm -hmm. miracles began to happen. Mm -hmm. So probably most of the times I believe that uh, humanity needs to avail themselves mm -hmm. to the wills and, and, and the purposes of divinity. Mm -hmm. Because one thing, if you are living in this world, you need to understand that we are in the game of spirits. Mm -hmm. This life you are living in, you think actually you are here just to live for yourself and pleasure and so forth and everything. Mm -hmm. Life is an errand of the Father. We are here as a purpose of spirits. Spirits want to find expression through, through you mm -hmm. and through us. And they are using us like we're using chess boards. Yes. Like how we play chess. So when one chooses to give his life expression mm -hmm. to the Spirit from God, God will use him. But in most cases, people avail themselves to all kinds of wrong spirits. Then they don't avail themselves to the purposes and the, and, and the wills of God. Mm -hmm. So that's why we believe that there are certain seasons where God does this and God doesn't do this and so forth and everything. But I believe miracles is a world that is existing every day. Amen. But one needs to tap into the Spirit. Mm -hmm. those, who are moved, those who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Thank you. How do I know I have encountered a miracle since some, some things are said to be coincidental? How do I? There's nothing like coincidence to someone who lives in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You understand that every occurrence that takes place in this cosmos, mm -hmm. is, it has already happened somewhere in the realms of the spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, we're living a life that is a delayed match. We're living a delayed life. Mm -hmm. Uh, right now, what makes you not is, uh, excited to watch the World, 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 World Cup that happened in 2010 mm -hmm. It's knowing that it has already happened and probably that time it's Brazil that won or it's another team that, that won, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the same thing about uh, what we people are calling coincidence. Mm -hmm. The life we are living in starts from the spirit mm -hmm. and what took place in this physical has already happened somewhere. Mm -hmm. So everything that is happening and everything, it's orchestrated from a deeper realm. It's mm -hmm. orchestrated from the unseen world. So it becomes a danger that if everything that you do, you do it here from the physical. Everything you know about yourself, it's what you know from the physical. Yes. Then you, you are just you are, you are a time bomb. Mm -hmm. You are a moving bomb. Anytime you can explode. Mm -hmm. Our life is orchestrated from the realm of the spirit. Thank you. Everything that takes place in one's life, there is a spirit that is baking up the events that are, mm. take, that are happening. So, so I don't believe in coincidence. I believe in miracles. Okay. Mm. And of course, can I sit for a miracle? Can I sit for a miracle? You don't sit for a miracle. But I want you to understand something. The principle, the Bible says in the book of Genesis, uh, it says, seed time and harvest time shall always with the, it speaks about seasons that are different seasons, but it speaks about also season seeding and harvest. Wow, well, as part of the seasons that are times that are always that are always happen and everything. Now, mm -hmm. one thing that I want you to understand: we coming from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. and you actually realize that many people are coming from families that were deeper in spiritual things, mm -hmm. and due to those incantations and so forth and everything, you realize their family had submitted to the kingdom of darkness or to a lesser power. Mm -hmm. So, due to that, there are certain things or certain happenings that cannot take place mm -hmm. in their lives. Why? Because the devil claims this family, yeah. or the devil claims this family because of an offering that someone took took to the devil or someone took offering to a witch doctor, mm -hmm. someone took offering sacrifice to the to, to, to ancestors and all those idols. So due to that, you realize there are certain things that cannot happen in this person's life. Then God says, then, then in direction comes to you and says, for this and this to happen, you need to build an altar with God. You need to commit yourself to 
in offerings and sacrifice and everything. You are not buying a miracle. You can buy a miracle. That's mm -hmm. a spiritual thing. That's, that's a thing of the spirit. You What you're doing, you're only yielding yourself to a principle that will give a ground floor for certain things to happen in your life. Okay. Thank mm. you so much. Because your grandfather never hesitated to mm. sacrifice a cow to an idol. Yes. But when God spoke about you giving a thousand, it sounds like it's something else and everything. That's why we are tied to poverty. Mm -hmm. That's why people are tied to failure. Because even if someone was fighting you, when they go, I can give you a good example. The same business you want to do, already someone is doing that business and this person is sacrificed to a strength God. Mm -hmm. And you believe yourself and you want to prosper in the same business, mm. but yet you are not standing at any point of having an altar with God. How possible is that? So that's why people, a giving just has to be a lifestyle of a Christian. We, for God so loved the world that he gave it. The first thing God did when he loved was to give. He gave. So in this world, I believe giving becomes a principle that guides the life of a believer. A true, true Christian. Mm -hmm. You don't need to teach him about giving. They know what they're supposed to do. Thank you so much. Mm. Powerful. Prophet, why is there so much doubt in some Christian circles about the existence of miracles? Uh, you know what happens? After the fall of Adam from the position that God was doing miracles every day, from the position where Adam was seeing the hand of God, after the fall of men, men began to live in a realm of confusion. Mm -hmm. Men began to live in a world of deception. So already Adam was deprived, was deceived. So a man that is living in confusion and in deception need now to be convinced of things that he knows that when I was standing in the right place of energy, God was doing this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Because what we are saying, miracle, it's something that always happens and that, that has happened at a certain place of an energy level. Remember the Bible says when it says that those who, mount, those who wait upon the Lord, they shall mount up like eagles. Yes. Where are you mounting going? You are going to a place of energy level where mm -hmm. God meets up with the humanity. There is already a place where God is available. Mm -hmm. What we are calling a miracle is already available in a certain place. But the energy level where men started operating after the fall of Adam is full of confusion, it's mm -hmm. full of doubts, it's full of uh, deception. Yes. So a man was deceived from his place of standing. Mm -hmm. So it's hard now when you're dealing with a man who was deceived from his place of standing. They do not have confidence mm -hmm. in what God is doing. That's why God is asking Adam, where are you saying, I'm naked. God is asking for the location. He's speaking about the condition. He's saying, I don't have confidence to stand before you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So confidence is the thing that gives a, a man boldness to man to stand before his maker. Mm -hmm. So, so what, what Lucifer stole from men is that boldness, that confidence that makes men a God man, a mm -hmm. man who stands in the presence, a man of the presence. A man of the presence knows that miracle is his lifestyle. Yes. Man of the presence does not pray for miracle because he lives at a place of an energy level where it's available. When you speak about energy level, what are we speaking about? You speak about faith. That's mm -hmm. an energy. That's an energy. So what I'm trying to say is that like, uh, so the world is living in a place of confusion, doubt, and everything. Mm. That's why constantly people, because of information, we're, depri we're derived or we're derived away mm. from the place where God wanted us to be. So yes. it also takes another information to take you back mm. to the place where God wants you to be. You know, the money you, you're going to have in the future, man of God, it's already there. Yes. What we call future, it's already... That future is already there. Yes. So it's only your energy level now where you will be, where you will stand. There's an energy level that allow millions to flow through your life. Mm -hmm. There's an energy level that allows certain connections to throw your life. Amen. So over the time when we are praying, we are trying to do this and also forth and everything. We are trying to create an energy level that takes you to where God wants you to, uh, where you avail yourself to the purposes Thank of you. the monarch of Zion. Mm. The Bible says, but now you have come. To Mount Zion, mm. to the city of the living God, oh. to the company of thousands and thousands of angels. Mm -hmm. Think about the company of angels. There are already angels that are released. Angels are already on assignment to attend you. Remember the Bible says angels are ministering spirits. Yes. So when one is standing in Zion, is standing in a city where God rules, where angels cater for your needs. Mm -hmm. That's the place where Paul was standing and says, With my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Mm -hmm. You see, if my need is a miracle, he will supply it according to his riches in glory. Yes. But there is a place now where one needs to stand. But now you have come to mm -hmm. Mount Zion. Yes. Now that you have come to the church of the firstborns whose names are registered in heaven. There are those whose names are registered in heaven. 
people who walk outside of doubt, people who, are, who, who choose to step outside of their comfortability zone, mm. those, the, the church of the firstborn, those names are registered in Zion. Those are people, those names that are, that are registered in, in heaven, those are people that will make impact in this world. Yes. Paul speaks about a family that says, we are families that are registered here on earth and families that are registered in heaven. Mm. Families that are registered in heaven, those are only families that will make impact in life. Wow. So needs one needs to avail themselves to divinity. to divinity. The reason why we depend on God is because everything we try to do ourselves it failed. Mm. So we have no option. God becomes our priority, becomes our op- becomes everything to us. Mm-hmm. So what for one to doubt that miracles are real or God is still doing miracles, it just means that person doubts even their self existence because your existence in this cosmos it's, it's a, a miracle. miracle. Yes. Everything is a miracle. Thank you. Thank you. Viewers, time is not friendly. But before we go, we just want to leave the time to the men of God also to say a word of advice to all our viewers all over the world. Uh, the only advice I can give to our viewers is because you realize many people are confused. They don't know who to believe, who to follow, and who's true, who's fake, who's genuine. But all I can say is that follow Jesus, then he will lead you to his servants. He will lead you to his pure breed. But the problem is that most of the times people are led by their emotions, their selfish desires, mm-hmm. their need, and they found themselves in wrong places and, or in cults or submitting under wrong anointings. So all I can advise to our viewers is that like, God is still alive and God is still speaking. Just follow Jesus. Make Jesus your primary, your primary focus. Do not focus on man. Focus on Christ. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 17, Cursed is the man who, who put his faith in people. So now we're having a lot of disappointments, heartbreaks, and depression, frustrations because people, they've invested a lot in men. They've invested all mm. their hopes and faith in men. People that do not have put their faith in God. So viewers all over the world, God is still alive. And Jesus is coming soon and very soon. Make sure you receive Christ, not your Papa. Papa does not have heaven. And because that's the problem that preachers are doing. Preachers are trying to build a religion for their followers. Yet they do not build in heaven for, their, for, the same, for the same religion that they are trying to branch out of Christ. Mm. So follow Christ. And Jesus is coming. And I pray that you are blessed, you are protected. Wherever you are watching us from, may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Just because of time, viewers all over the world, thank you so much for joining us at Gospel Hour. Kindly follow us on our Facebook and other social platforms. We love you. Remain blessed. Let's meet again same time, same place. Shalom.